40 volt, 18 volt times 2. Is there any difference? Stay tuned to find out. G'day everyone, I'm going to make this intro quick because I've got to get outside and do some cuts with these saws before it pours down with rain. If you are wanting to see the 260mm rear handle Makita 40 volt circular saw, that will be up in the corner up here. Today we're putting the 40 volt 185mm saw up against the 36 volt 185mm saw. This is the RS001G. This is the DRS780. If you're in the States, it is and also another really cute little 40 volt saw in the background there, I've done a video on that which is up here, down in the description. You don't have to rush off and watch one of those other circular saw videos, you can watch these ones first. I will put links to that at the end of the video, links to the 260 at the end of the video and down in the description. So you won't miss out, don't panic. But I'm going to tell you about these saws after I've gone out and used them a bit. But I just needed to get this shot with the nice new blades on them before I go and mess them up on a whole bunch of timber. So yeah, I'm going to go and rip some stuff now, as soon as the batteries have come off the charger, nice and fresh. For the rip test, I'm going to be using this freshly delivered nice wet 8x2 or 200x50. I'm going to cut it in half and do 3 meters on each saw, using the one piece of wood as I do in all the tests. Gives it a better, fairer test because it should be roughly the same density of timber and the same wetness. Come on, come on, I haven't got all day here. Let's go batteries. I'm going to be using a 5 amp hour battery on the 40 volt and two 5 amp hour batteries on the 18x2 36 volt. That doesn't mean this is going to be running 10 amp hours. This makes these even. This is 5 amp hours running at 36 volt nominal. These two together add up to 5 amp hours running at 36 volt nominal. No complaints, right? Well I haven't seen the footage that you've just watched but I don't need to see it to know which one of these saws cut the best. Boy oh boy that was nice. After I stopped recording I cut another two 6 meter lengths of 200 by 50 and right down the middle the same as the one that was in the video. So that's 15 meters in total and it hasn't even put a mark on the blade that's how straight and smooth this thing was to use. Those I think were the nicest rip cuts I have ever done with a circular saw, certainly with a battery circular saw. It didn't lose power, it just went through nice, smooth, straight, consistent, all the way. The 18x2 in contrast was a little bit slower and it struggled a little bit. I mean it cut perfectly fine, it did a, it did a perfect job. It would work for you no problem, you know. But it was slower, I could feel it was slower and, uh, and I could hear it changing speed. It was, it was losing power at times and I just had to back off the pressure a little bit. Whereas with the 40 volt, it just smashed it. I just want to keep ripping now but I can't rip up all the timber because I need to save some for another saw that I've got to review that has just arrived and so I don't want to waste all my timber with this saw because yeah you guys are going to want to see this one too aren't you? wonder what country it's from. These saws are all made in China even the ones I've gotten from Japan have been made in China. Now let's take a look at what's the same and what's different between these two saws. The base plates are the same. The guards are the same. They both have bevel detents at 22 and a half, 45 and the max at 53. Let's take a look at how deep those cuts go. The depth of cut on both tools is the same. A standard straight up and down 90 degree cut is 65 millimeters deep. If you do it on 22 and a half, you're looking at 55, 45 degrees, you're looking at 45 mil. And at 53 degrees, you're looking at about 37, 38. That is with a 185 millimeter blade. If you stuck a 190 on there, you'll get a couple more mil out of each of those measurements. Um, I'm guessing you can put a 190 on there and it'll fit. I haven't actually tried it. They're both exactly the same in the depth of cut adjustment. They both have a rafter hook with the one on the 18x2 being somewhat larger than the one on the new 40 volt. So those are the similarities. What is different about these things? Well the one way which was always going to be different is how the batteries are put on. 40 volt has this huge cutout in the side and the top. The batteries go in like so. 
I'm not a huge fan of it. It's, it's quite tricky getting your thumb in here to get these out. Um, yeah, they could have made that a bit nicer or maybe cut that down at that point. I don't know why you need that big bit of plastic there. I guess it's just reinforcing here for the handle to make it all the right size and everything. But yeah, I don't know. They could have done that maybe just a little bit nicer. With the LXT, unfortunately this gets in the way somewhat. You've got to flick that out of the way to put the batteries on. And of course you have two and they go in the side underneath. Is it better or worse than the other one? I don't know. But of course this is a larger area making the saw a little bit heavier, a little bit more cumbersome. You can run the other saw on basically one of those batteries weight wise. Or if you put the 5 amp hour on it is about the same weight as that. The LXT model has a button here on the top for checking your batteries because they're hidden down the bottom and it's a pain to get to. Whereas the 40 volt with the battery on you can just push the battery, it's nice and easy to get to. Onboard tool storage on the 40 volt for your spanner to change your blade. And as far as I can tell there's no onboard storage of a tool for this one. Unless it's hidden somewhere and I haven't found it yet. Let's do some cross cuts now. The blades are getting well worn in as you can see. In this one we're also going to chuck in the top handle here, the HS003G, as well as the 18x2. So let's look at the three of them in some cross cuts. When it comes to dust extraction they both have the same size port but Makita is it within the realms of possibility to please make them the same as some other tool instead of making a different size one on just about every tool you guys make. Here are some fittings I have which came with one of your dust extractors. Four different fittings I've got and none of them will fit. I have this problem every time I get a Makita tool. <laughs> How hard is it to make them you know roughly the same size like Two or three different ones maybe. Not a different one for every second bloody tool. It's just not good enough and to expect people to have all these different adapters laying around in their van and remember which ones go with which tools and stuff, it's just not on. That's probably my biggest complaint about this tool. So what other complaints do I have? Um, the battery which I told you about, not a biggie. Don't like this. Don't find it's necessary. Makes you hold your hand potentially a bit unnaturally. Spread your fingers apart here and maybe your bottom finger rubs on there a bit. Just makes it a little bit uncomfortable. Just get rid of that bit of plastic. Just doesn't need to be there. Apart from that, looking pretty good. I now want to put it up against the HS003, the top handle here. We're going to put them up against each other in a rip test because I think this is going to smash it. So let's check that out. Um, I'm going to rip some H1.2 nice pink framing timber. So why is this saw cutting much faster than the other two? Let's take a look at the RPMs. Right, if you've made it this far through the video, you're probably one of the regulars, so I've got something to ask here, guys. Memberships. Are you interested in YouTube memberships? Heaps of you keep saying, why don't you start a Patreon, get some money in to fund some of these videos. Yeah, I've looked into it. But memberships on YouTube are now quite easy, so I'm thinking about doing that. If you're interested in that sort of thing, let me know down below. I really need about 100 people to do it, at least for it to be worthwhile. I had a look at the pricing, it looks like it starts at about $2.99 New Zealand dollars, which is about $2.90 Australian, and around 2 bucks US, or about 3 pence. No, about a pound 50. And euro-wise, I don't know, something around the 150 to 2 euro mark, something like that. And for that, your comments will get highlighted when you leave a comment. You'll have special emojis, woohoo! And um, other little icons and shit that go next to your name down in the comments. And I will do videos that are only for the members, which will be a bit more sort of uncensored, you know? There's a lot of stuff I say that when I go to edit these videos, I think... I can't put that in there, I'll get in trouble. But YouTube won't mind so much if you guys are paying for it. 
that's how the world works. If people can't stumble across it, then you can pretty much say what you want. Also, you'll have more input into videos. I can maybe do videos on based on your suggestions. I'm more likely to answer your comments. And hopefully, you'll get to see the videos earlier. I'm not sure exactly how that part of it works yet. Um, I haven't found it. Extra videos, not a problem, but the early access, I'll have to see how it works if I get it going. Because a lot of these videos sit on my channel for a week or two before I actually click the go live button. So if that interests you, please let me know down below just so I can get a gauge on what people are thinking and whether it's worth my while or not. So yeah, anyway, back to this. So when it comes to ripping timber, this tool is a cracker. I'm loving it for ripping. As for cross cuts, not quite so much. As you would have seen in the video, cross cuts, I was doing some in 300 by 50, that's 12 by 2, and it was fine for that large timber. When you're doing like 4 by 2s and stuff, if you're just holding them in your hand and trying to cut them and stuff with this, a little bit more annoying because all the weight of the tools up the front here and your hands way back here. When you're using a top handled saw like this, the weight is right underneath your hand, makes it easy to hold and steer and yeah, just do your cut with this. When you sort of let it go, it wants to hang down like this because it's quite hard to hold it up straight with one hand all the time. Now, I know North Americans, you guys are much more used to using these saws for everything, but in this part of the world, in fact, in most of the world, we don't really use these rear handled worm drive, sidewinder, whatever you want to call them. Um, circular saws, we just don't use them. We've always had these top handled ones. So you've got to get used to a different way of cutting. So instead of cutting things on the flat, it is much easier to sort of hold them on a 45 degree angle and push down with the saw. And let the weight and the gravity of the saw do the work for you instead of trying to hold things flat. So it's kind of good if you haven't got a good setup on site and you want to cut 4 by 2s just across your leg, then this is quite a good saw to use compared to a top handle. But overall, I wouldn't use it personally for cross cuts. For ripping, any day of the week, I will grab this saw. This is a cracker, as I said, for ripping. But for cross cuts, I think I'll stick with the top handles. When this 18x2 rear handled saw came out, I had a heap of people wanting me to review it. In fact, there's probably not been a day go by for the last year or however long this one has been out that I haven't had somebody mention it in a comment somewhere. You guys love this saw. You've always wanted me to do it. I've never done it. But today, you saw me put it up against the 40 volt, and I love that 40 volt saw. And if you love this saw, then you will love the 40 volt saw, because the 40 volt is a big step up from this one, in my opinion. Size-wise, they are the same, they're the same length, but this one is 700 grams heavier than the 40 volt, which is basically one of those. And that's without having any batteries on it. So if you run the 40 volt on a 2.5 amp hour battery, it is the equivalent of this one without any batteries. So substantially lighter. You're looking at about 1.3 kgs lighter overall with battery on it. So that's a big improvement just there, really. But the RPMs is where it really smashes it. This, 5,100. That, 6,400. 1,300 more RPM. The one in the back... The top handle is 6,000 RPM. You wouldn't think that extra 400 would make a big difference, but definitely feels a lot more power in this rear handled saw than there is in that top handled one. So I'm left with a bit of a dilemma here. I'm thinking maybe I should go with that one for ripping. You get rid of that one and run a 165 for cross cuts and whenever you want a light tool when you're up a ladder, that sort of thing. And maybe the little 125 because the front comes off and it gives you a whole lot more options for getting into tight spaces and doing up against walls and stuff. And no AWS on the 40 volt in the front or the 18x2 in the back. So that's the new Makita RS002G. Or if you're in the States, it'll be the GSR01, I do believe. Something like that. It's a little bit hard remembering all these numbers and tracking down all these numbers especially since some of these tools when I make these videos aren't released yet and sometimes it's hard to find the numbers in certain parts of the world. If you want to buy one I'll try and stick some links down below. You can order them from Handy Hardware in New Zealand. You can get one from Amazon in the UK. You might be able to get one from Amazon in the States. Have a look down below. The links will all be in the description. So thanks for watching boys and girls, let me know down below what you think of this saw, if you've tried one, and any other tools you want me to review, down below, leave a comment, 
Also have a look in the descriptions and up in the top corner and at the end of the video for other 40 volt stuff I do. I've done a heap of 40 volt reviews already now and there's still a lot to go. So cheers everyone, stay safe out there in this crazy world and I'll see you on another one real soon. Cheers.